I think I missed like a month of these meetings just from random conflicts. I think we only have the meeting once a month. I thought it was twice a month. Uh, I think it's once these days. We've, we've uh, tweaked the schedule over the years. Uh, oh, I'm thinking of uh, this plus CCUG. Oh, yeah, CCUG is a bit more frequent. We've got uh, two a month with that one. Folks, welcome. We have things to talk about this week, so we might as well get to it. Um, fair amount going on in viewer development land, and some of them are uh, relevant to folks that are looking for what's coming next and what to merge with and all that good stuff. Uh, let's see, in terms of viewer updates, um, we've got... Uh, I think the main thing this past week has been the uh, project viewer shipped for WebRTC. Uh, we'll be talking a little more about, about WebRTC voice in a minute. Um, and then uh, just uh, continuing work on a bunch of other viewers. The most likely next promotion at this point is MateX, uh, which... Uh, is probably going to go out next week, and that also has implications that we'll be talking about in a minute. Um, but there's, uh, in addition to Mate X, there's a big push to get uh, featurettes out. There's a relatively small set of issues left for that. Um, maybe we could start with that one. Uh, Dave, do you want to talk a bit about where we are with uh, featurettes and what the next steps look like? Sure. Uh, so... As far as we can tell, all the things that we consider to be showstoppers are fixed and uh, release slash materials underscore featurette branch, and that is winding its way through what will hopefully be uh, final QA now. Um, remaining issues will be addressed in project slash GLTF underscore development, which will be the ongoing development branch for... Uh, uh, maintenance and feature development related to GLTF and maybe other things too. Um, well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, internally, the server team has switched to to a uh, Git flow, and there's conversations about trying that out on the viewer side too. Um, so while we experiment with that, the project slash GLTF underscore development branch would be the closest thing to a develop branch and get flow speak um we'll see how that goes so yeah if, if you're making prs um that would be a safe branch to base your pr on and we'll try continuously releasing that um so when featurettes uh, goes to the main viewer, um, we'd make a release fork of the project slash GLTF development branch and then put that through QA and ship it as soon as there aren't any showstoppers. Repeat. So are we anticipating that the next featurettes RC update will probably be the, the last one before promotion? I think so. I'd always defer to QA uh, would, and product. Sure. Uh, I would say probably not. There's quite a not. few. There's quite a bit of testing to be done yet. Okay. Okay. Um, I look at the issue list though. There's one left. Uh, that's a crasher and set shaders, which might be fixed or might be unsupported hardware. So that's the state of that branch. But yeah, QA tends to find more things. How, how close are we to the next RC update then? In, in general uh, terms? 
we're we're waiting on some QA time. Okay. Right, because next week is Mate X. Right. That's right. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that's the plan. Okay. Well, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess watch watch this space then. Um, but uh, yeah, we're very much excited about getting featurettes out. There's a, you know, in addition to addressing some of our some of the highest priority bugs, it's also got uh, some some very exciting new graphics changes in it. That's the one that has the mirrors, uh, PBR terrain, and uh, 2K texture support. So uh, all all very cool stuff in itself. Uh, let's see. Next topic, I uh, guess, is uh, WebRTC. Do we have uh, Roxy or somebody? Roxy, you're here. Do you want to talk a bit about where we are with that? Yeah, I can do that. Um, anyway, so we have a project viewer out now. Um, works on VBox as well, so it's it's kind of a, a joint thing. Um, and we're planning on putting out a, a snack region <clears throat> today. So you'll be able to pick that up and try it out on Agni um, for spatial voice only. We won't have a uh, peer-to-peer group or ad hoc for a little bit um, on Agni, although that is available on the DD. Um, yes, there's something that. Thank you, Brady. Um, Let's see, we're pushing ahead on the project viewer, trying to nail bugs and, uh, and so on. It's uh, been pretty good so far, and we're going to try to get an RC of that viewer pretty shortly, um, so you can start playing with it for real. Um, although the... Uh, the branches out there on, on viewer and I know some of you have already been looking at it. Um, so, uh, feel free to dive ahead on that because we do have a pretty aggressive schedule on this. Um, let's see, we were talking about end of June, actually deploying to an RC channel. Um, although that's flexible depending on, uh, schedule, uh, your schedule, um, and you want to deploy end of July to all of SLS. Again, that's, yeah, an understandably a pretty aggressive schedule for, for you all, but uh, the hope is that the uh, changes are pretty localized. There's a new WebRTC voice module that plugs into the viewer, and if you tweaks here and here and about to uh, get the IM subsystem to talk to it. So the pain should be not so bad, I don't think, uh, for those of you who have based your viewers off of um, ours, uh, especially if you've you know, kind of kept up to date. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd like to say, I, you know, I am here to help. I would... Uh, Love to help out any way I can. So feel free to contact me in the uh, uh, the mailing list, or if I'm online. Any questions about that? Okay, that's good to know. It's you know, hopefully, as as Roxy says, it's not going to be too dramatic uh, a merge since the changes are fairly localized. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, can take a look if uh, you know if anybody wants to to uh, take a take a pass at the current code base for the project viewer. Uh, they're welcome to do that. Of course, uh, you know you'd probably want to wait for the for the RC before you. You uh, would be putting it out more widely, but uh, it's not. Uh, it, you know, it is, Roxy, is it fair to say that the 
you know, most of the code is is should be pretty stable, and we're mostly just bug fixing at this point. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's bug fixing. Some of that is on the uh, server side, in fact, which should not affect the viewer code much. Um, and there will likely be another drop or two of the WebRTC library itself, um, the one we grab from uh, the WebRTC open source to fix a few bugs, and that should be just a drop-in replacement for what's there. So, uh, yeah, we should we should be in pretty good shape. Uh, Rex, did you talk about what the expected behavior looks like when when the grid is mixed, when some regions have WebRTC support and some don't? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so the project viewer slash RC viewer will handle both types of regions. Um, so uh, we can handle mixed. Uh, we won't probably have mixed for very long. Um, there will be some bumps. Peer-to-peer, um, -peer, ad hoc, and group voice um, may be a little weird. Um, but I'm working ahead trying to get things to negotiate down so that if you have an odd ad hoc or group conversation and somebody pops in who's using a VBOX region, everybody will negotiate down to VBOX. Um, or if you start up a conversation that's all people on the WebRTC regions, um, it'll default to WebRTC. So in your testing, um, if you want to really test the WebRTC stuff uh, for group ad hoc and peer-to-peer, and -peer, uh, it's important that everybody uh, involved in that conversation is in a WebRTC region. Because that's the thing we're really trying to nail. There might be some bumpiness, though, between different a mix of regions, and uh, hopefully that won't last long. So if you have a WebRTC viewer and uh, if you have a WebRTC viewer, then you can you can visit either a, a WebRTC region or or a Vivox region, but local chat won't work across the boundary between those two different region types. Is that is that the yeah. people are going to see? Yeah, I don't think we have too many cases like that. Do do we? Um, but yeah, if you're at the boundary between, say, one of the RC channels and the rest of main grid, you won't hear a voice across region boundaries. But if you're, you know, on on WebRTC region that abuts a uh, another WebRTC region, you will hear across region. And of course, the old VBox stuff works uh, across region as well. Yeah, and so that wouldn't. Yeah. yeah, I guess the the cross boundary thing wouldn't be a common occurrence now, but it no. should be more common while we're in sort of an intermediate state or part where yeah. the server stuff is is partly rolled out. Yeah, and the hope is that's not too long or just enough time for us to, uh, you know, uh, make sure there's no issues and and fix them if there are. Yep, that's the plan. We'll, we'll do a, a blog post about this, listing all the little um, caveats and, uh, you know, listing a, a potential schedule. And again, it's still flexible depending on uh, where y'all are. Uh, when do you think would be a good time to pull... Uh, WebRTC into the GLTF development branch? Um, I, I'd say let it sit on the, as a project viewer for a little while, um, like a week or, or so. Okay. And then we can we can talk about pulling it in. Um, I'll go ahead and, and sync up to the development branch so there's, you know, so, it, so it's all synced up and it should be able to just fold right in. Yeah, should be pretty easy. It's one of the things I worry about with uh, uh, the, the way th we have things going on Discord with the installers is getting people testing stuff mm -hmm. um, and missing some other stuff that we want them to test. So getting it all yeah. 
Right, making them not have to choose the installer to, to run would probably be helpful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, given that uh, the WebRTC viewer will work on VBox regions, uh, it should be pretty right. pain-free um, if we do fold that in. People will be able to go everywhere on main grid, so. Any other questions? Yeah, we're trying to do as much under the covers technically to reduce that pain. Um, I, I believe the WebRTC stuff has, you know, for instance, better NAT supports and, and such, so that actually will reduce the uh, support pain for people. Um, but uh, we'll have to explore that once we release it to more and more people. Um, that's the hope. Um, you know, I may have to rely on some of y'all um, to help with that because uh, I'm not focusing on Linux right now. Um, but I will provide what support I can. Then a little bit to make sure the uh, WebRTC RTC libraries uh, proper uh, build on Linux and uh, you know our. We'll need to hear from you as to whether uh, um, Pulse Audio or, or the audio subsystem works for you. Uh, I think we have right now, was it ASLA? The, the basic audio system um, installed with the uh, WebRTC libraries. But uh, we may have to tweak that for uh, different viewers depending on your needs. All right, any other questions on WebRTC? We've got uh, one more topic, and then we can go to general uh, discussion. But there were two. Uh, maybe there's two, and I'm forgetting one. I was going to talk about the uh, Matex white space stuff. What's our other one? Uh, PBR support and SL21B. Okay, that's, that's also a good one. Do you want to talk about that one first? Sure. Uh, so SL21B will not have, the content for that will not have fallbacks for blend phone. Um, and at that point, the communication to people who ask, you know, why is this stuff at SL21B showing up all gray or white um, will be, well, your viewer is out of spec and you need to update. And... Yeah, there seems to have been some willful misunderstanding or miscommunication in the community around what the expected behavior is. But if an artist has provided a GLTF material for their object, you shouldn't show the blend fawn material in any circumstances. That's kind of like showing the underlying prem when somebody has made a mesh object. Yeah, we're not saying we're getting rid of blend fawn. We're just saying if somebody has applied a GLTF material, you need to show that. You can't show the blend fawn material. So if content was created with blend fawn and nobody's changed it to PBR, it's just going to continue looking the same and there's no, there's no expectation that anything else is going to happen there. Yeah, artists don't have the bandwidth to make PBR or make uh, blend font fallbacks for other content like like the whole point of uh, getting rid of the forward render and going all in on uh, deferred rendering was so that artists would have one target to build for uh, 
The SL twenty one B is late June, right? Yes. And sometime between now and then, we'll likely start making uh, the LSL scripts that modify blend fawn parameters, um, modify their PBR equivalents, or do nothing when a PBR material is applied. So like LL set color, for example, would set the base color, not the legacy diffuse color. And that should make life a lot simpler for uh, scripters going forward, because scripters have been giving us feedback that trying to do something simple like that with existing scripts is impossible, because they have to do a check to see if a GLTF material is applied, and then if there is, use all set primitive params. If there isn't, then use all set color, or just use all set primitive params all the time, but a lot of scripts just want to use all set color. So just make it do the intuitive thing. Uh, any other questions on PBR migration? Uh, converting to linear color when in that mode? No. Um, the uh, uh, sRGB, sorry, the base color is in sRGB space. So we'll stick to what the spec says. Um, both linear, or both uh, base color and emissive color are stored as sRGB. Oh, it does. Crap. OK. Now we is have that to add a magical that conversion accurate. No issue. I don't think we're doing conversions on that number to when it comes yeah. out also. I think that's I know it's stored as sRGB. Um, I think it's just a documentation bug. We might be doing conversions on it because we do for lights, for light yeah. colors. Hmm. Sounds like we'll be talking about this on Discord. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you, Zanny. Ongoing project. Okay. Uh, let's see. So one other topic. Uh, some of you may remember past meetings where we, we talked about the issue of trying to fix our, um, our white space problems in the viewer code base. We've had... Over the years, it's turned into kind of an unholy mess of just mixed tabs and spaces, and we uh, we wanted to kind of standardize it, but we were concerned that you know making a bulk change like that would generate a bunch of conflicts. Um, you know, the the behavior 
back then was that if you tried to merge, you would just it would show as a conflict basically every line where the white space was changed, and so it would be a, pretty much a non-starter for all the people managing multiple projects internally and for all the TPVs trying to merge with our code. Um, however, the the tech has advanced a bit, and uh, a while back, uh, Signal was doing some investigation on this and found that, that you could actually do merges um, without running into this problem given the appropriate uh, command line options. And so that that kind of got us unstuck and we decided it would make sense to to uh, take the opportunity to move to uh, kind of standard formatting for our code. Um, so that, that change is one of the things that's in main X, which as we mentioned is likely to promote next week. Um, so, uh, as, as folks pull those changes in, they're going to need to know about the process to avoid getting into the uh, uh, stew of conflicts. And um, so we'll be, uh, we'll be publicizing this info. Uh, and I think I have the link here if anybody wants to read up on it ahead of time. Um, but uh, yeah, basically, you, you need... Uh, you need a, a appropriate merge command line, and you need uh, you need a sort of a space standardization script to to fix up anything that uh, you know didn't get picked up in the merge. Um, so just want to let people know about it. I know there's been some concern. I think mostly from folks who are afraid that the merge was going to be a nightmare. And we have done some experiments uh, internally with trying to merge our uh, you know, white space standardized into uh, uh, at least Firestorm, and I think we've looked at some other viewers as well, and it's it's gone okay. So, um, like I think the I think those directions are are pointing out some specific things we ran into in the process of running it on Firestorm, but uh, there could be you know similar things with other viewers. Uh, sorry, Bitbucket URL. Uh, there was a leftover artifact from, I think, the earlier version of the doc, but it's fixed now. Oh, all right. Yeah, we've uh, uh, we've mostly moved on from Bitbucket, but every so often you run into screwy links here and there. I don't remember what Bitbucket was. Yep, you moved on. Uh, so that's that's it for that. I, you know, our our intent and hope is that this is going to be a not very painful experience, but uh, it is something that doesn't normally happen when we have a promotion. So just uh, wanted to give some advance notice on that. All right. Uh, any questions about that, or I want to move on to general Q and A? Why is the earth shattering kaboom? No, right. I came for the earth shattering kaboom. Uh, we just have to wear people out with lots of uh, lots of graphics discussions first. Yeah, this is very anticlimactic. I mean, if there's no drama, what's the point of this whole, like, third-party viewer program? Perfect. Thank there you, it is. <laughs> 2K textures. Abuse.
Yeah, I'm still of the opinion that with functional texture streaming, 2K on everything isn't nearly as big of a problem as people are making it out to be. Um, so show me the build that falls over because it's got 2K on everything. It's definitely a waste of time putting 2K on everything. I mean, nobody's that interested in your fingernails. It just isn't a thing. I mean, if you want to pay the 50 Lindens per upload, by all means, knock yourself out. Um, yeah, there's definitely a cost on our end to store the things. Um, but with functional texture streaming, it doesn't actually download the 2K version until you zoom up in on it. Um, so for the vast majority of the content, and I mean, and I mean, it's like, it's an exponential fall off with distance. Like you got to be really zoomed in to get the 2K. Yeah, the, the, the hope is that the people who have been breaking their mesh up into four meshes in order to put four 1Ks on it will just do one 2K now. Because um, it's absolutely true that, that with 1K being the cap, it's very difficult to make uh, an attractive-looking avatar skin by modern standards. Which brings the question of 2K bakes on mesh to a thing. Um, and that is not on the schedule, but we might want to think about what would be involved in making that work sooner than later. And yeah, earrings made up of 2K at a distance, unless it's bugged, you should only download whatever resolution that those earrings are on the screen. So if those earrings are taking up 64 by 64 pixels on the screen, you get the 64 by 64 version of the texture. Uh, loss, lossless 2K is supported on normal maps when you use the GLTF upload. Because the, the compression on normal maps makes the normal maps unusable. Bake service, it's probably not a huge change to get the bake service to support it, but um, bake service is also compositing textures that it gets from wearables, so we would have to uh, we would have to actually change the settings for what texture resolutions we allow in the wearables as well before you would see any effect from, from upping the limit in the bake service. But yeah, it's Definitely be a squeaky wheel on that if that's important to you. Um, I think there was a canny issue asking for that, but I don't have my finger on it at the moment. But that is that is an example of the kind of mode we're transitioning to in order to get more positive changes out faster is you know, we're not going to hold the ability to put 2k textures on anything until bakes on mesh has 2k support and we're also not going to prioritize bakes on mesh 2k over other features that might be more valuable so the calculus is 
if Bakes Unmatched 2K is essential and more valuable than some of the other things we're working on, um, then we should put that in front of those other things. So it's, it, it is a question of when, not if, but your feedback influences when. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, the avatar UV map is a little odd. I remember when we went from 512 to 1024, there were definitely some places where you could notice a significant improvement there. Probably somewhere UK would be even better. You may be spending the money on sunglasses instead if uh, people get what they're looking for on the emissive. I think that's all we got for this week. Uh, Signal or Kyle, anything else we should cover? I can think of. I think we've covered it all. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, there's a question about GLTF scene import. Um, oh, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, yeah, what, what you've seen in Discord, or sorry, on, uh, on GitHub, uh, is prototyping out a scene import, but the idea is that an object will uh, act as the root for uh, a GLTF scene. Um, and we'll hang nodes off of that object. So kind of like how when you import a Collada mesh, um, that mesh replaces the prim. Um, same in the same way, a GLTF uh, scene would replace your your prim, and so one prim would have many nodes hanging off of it, and each of those nodes could reference a mesh. Um, and as far as linking more prims together, that's that's still an open question of what the uh, actual data model will look like. Um, there are some options, like we could figure out a way to make a node have a reference to an external object, um, so it wouldn't even have to be part of the same link set. We could have a restriction where only prims that are part of the link set can be children of nodes. Um, we'll just have to experiment with it and see which way makes the most sense for, you know, inventory management and resource limits and just list. Um, but the, the use case that we're going through right now is GLTF scene handing off of a object. Um, in the development process right now, we're, we're almost to the point where we're uploading um, those scenes to the asset server and downloading them again. Uh, we just have to open uh, a few more um, pieces of the pipe on the back end with the, with the CDN. Um, but that should be coming together pretty quickly. Uh, and once the import upload download works, then we'll be doing the work to make sure that you can move the nodes uh, from LSL and from like using the selection tools on the client and have all the clients agree on where the nodes are. Yes. Uh, so the nodes will be modifiable from the build tools and from LSL. Uh, and we're also working on animation support um, and export. Export's the other side of it that's going to be interesting to work out the particulars on. Um, I've got a demo video. I could probably trick Discord into sharing if I send it to Rai. Hi, Rai. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just sent you a video just to get it on Discord's. Magic link CDN. Yeah. Uh, she copy link. Is this gonna work? That might work. I think if you click that, it'll ask you to download an MP4. Okay. But that that shows how it works. Um, so you make a prem, you go to develop GLTF open, um, pick a GLB or a GLTF file, and it does a local preview. Um, just picks the first animation on the list, starts playing that animation. Um, and then from there, you can you know, make the prim that is attached to invisible. Soon we'll make that happen implicitly, where the prim it's attached to just stops existing, kind of like happens with sculpts and meshes. Um, and then you can export back out. Uh, and a later version hasn't gone into the development branch yet. Uh, doesn't decompose button, which breaks it up into the 
components that you'd end up seeing on the asset store. And then there's an upload button that attempts to upload to the asset store and currently fails because the simulator doesn't accept SL bin or sorry, GL bin or GLTF files yet. Uh, yes, uh, anywhere that the idea is that, and keep in mind, all this is subject to change as we get through development. So it's all theory until we actually get it and world and see how it runs and see what the actual implications are. But the idea is that anywhere where you could have a prem, you could have a GLTF scene. Um, and then there's a physics side of it too. We're looking at uh, some extensions that aren't quite ratified yet by Kronos, um, but should be by the time we get to them, um, that add support for collision shapes. So you'd be able to, and those already have working implementations with with Blender, so you'd be able to set up your physics shapes in Blender and then import that. Same thing with LODs. So that, that, that's the main use case we're focusing on is build something in Blender, one touch import to Second Life to get it in Second Life exactly as it is in Blender. And if you see something that you wanted to modify in SL, then you can move some nodes around, tweak some material parameters, and then you need to like do something to it that you can't do in SL, like modify a mesh, export back to Blender, make your modification, merge the modifications back in, just have that round trip, rapid iteration to try to make it so that you can use Blender and Second Life, but still build collaboratively and interactively with other people. So just like uh, with the materials project, the goal was to get what you see is what you get. One touch import from Substance Painter for the materials. Now we're trying to get that same kind of level of functionality with Blender for the meshes in the scene. Does that make sense? Yes, Gaines is working on transmission right now. Is Gaines here? Not Gaines at is, this time. Gaines is literally working on transmission right now. <laughs> and I think IOR and volume as well. Yeah, and, and emissive strength. Oh, and emissive strength, yep. HDR emissive, woo! Yeah, we, clear coat is not on the list right now. Um, that's its own special thing. Uh, yeah, I think uh, clear coat will wait until after. Let's see, there's there's transmission. There's another thing that Gaines is going to work on, and then after that, Gaines was going to work on um, point light shadows. Uh, so it, people asking about different shaders, it's, we're not going to get ahead of the spec. Um, so if you Google GLTF extensions, uh, 
uh, if yeah, if you look at uh, sorry, just got distracted by somebody. Um, here it is. So that's that's the box of crayons. Um, so transmission and I think volume and IOR are being worked on right now. Um, and we don't have any immediate plans to look at clear coat or dispersion or iridescence or any, or any of those. Um, I'll probably prioritize uh, lights punctual ahead of that. Um, you know, th th things that further scene import will be will be next up. Um, get uh, get that working, uh, and then circle back to remaining uh, materials that we don't support yet. You know, resources, permitting and demand demonstrated kind of kind of thing. Like if one person is like, oh, I really want clear coat, um, we probably wouldn't do it. But <laughs> yeah, we we want to get to where we can put the GLTF stamp on uh, the viewer, uh, and Kronos has some very strict guidelines about when you can do that. So we'll prioritize stuff that gets us there first. Um, Christy bringing up supporting it, the occlusion strength is a good one because that is in the base spec, one of the optionals. Yes. Um, is that it's occlusion like strength? So in the spec, we're, 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 the spec uses the RFC language of must, should, may. Uh, yeah, it's under one of the mays. Yeah, so we're targeting the must and shoulds first. Like those, those take priority. Yeah, it turns out it's not just KHR. But unless you're getting into the code, pretend it's just KHR. <laughs> There's some EXTs, like like we might end up using MeshOpt for internal storage. Oh, and we'll probably end up using the Microsoft LOD implementation. Uh, there already has been a feature request on shadow controls for lights. Um, but yeah, light, like, like the, the issue that, that people have been having is light leak. And like, the, like that's the big thing is you, you make a light in second life and even the lights that cast shadows they tend to leak like you'll, you'll get light and bleeding through walls um like in point lights it's a given because they don't even cast shadows uh so controls for that um would be adding bias and offset so you can set the bias the shadow bias and shadow offset per light and presumably also set whether or not it has a shadow map Right. Yeah, 
we definitely don't want to lose the ability to have like hundreds of small lights on the scene just for contact lighting and making it a requirement that every shadow cat or every light cast shadows would be death for small contact lights. Probes could get a toggle, can contain shadows. What do you mean? That's an interesting thought. I could definitely see how you could implement that and how it would be useful. That sounds like a good feature request. <laughs> you might write that up. All right, folks, well, we're about at time. Thanks for coming by, and I'm going to run off and have a weekend. Have fun. Thank you. Yeah, Bye, it's everybody. Beer. Thanks, everyone else. Yep. Thanks, Adios. I'm going to release featurettes tonight. Ooh, ooh. I might go check out Fractal on the beta grid. I know. We, we need to go, like, uh, sanitize it with bleach first. No, let's go. Field trip. It, it needs some bleach. Yes, we have to go apply a little bit of bleach and remove the adult things. Okay, okay. Let me know. It should take us, like, half an hour, probably. Grief, one of these days I'll get an updated avatar. This thing doesn't even have mesh. Oh, look, I have cute PBR armor. Awesome looking. What? Where? The, the, the oh, yeah, thing. It? Yay. But it's not 2K. It's not 2K, but it is pretty. It's very pretty. Let me put the helmet on. <laughs> there we go. I got I got a helmet even. Ooh. Dog helmets always crack me up. How do you see out of that thing? It has cameras. Magic cameras. Um, hey, well, I'm going to run off to uh, end of week happy hour thing. Uh, definitely looking forward fun. to seeing what you do with Fractal. You were gonna, we're gonna clean it up and uh, apply the PBR terrain. Sweet. on the PBR terrain for our own PBR terrain viewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, I held off on doing it because it turns the ground gray for anyone who can't see it and most of our users cannot see it. So it's like, oh, I'll probably, probably wait to be Tourette's. Yeah, so I'm gonna release that tonight. Awesome. Subsume all the testers. And then oh. it'll go to like three thousand something people. Um also thanks for the uh uh third party library contribs. That's been super helpful. Like I definitely want to get it set up so that if a third party viewer is using like, like wants to introduce a dependency that they have on a third-party library um, that we'd be totally fine building and hosting the package. <laughs> just I've so. just been getting tired of the uh, weird differences between our code bases because I replace libraries that annoy me. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it's that kind of thing where it's like they annoy us too, but we don't want to go through the hassle of dealing with the 3P process. Um, but you're really good at it. So. I know. I've only been doing it for, uh, let me check, what, what year is it? Uh, 15 years. Yeah, so, like, I think it makes sense for us to just host that, because I know hosting that stuff isn't cheap. But that that's something to talk to Signal about. Uh-huh. Huh? Hi, Signal. Uh -huh. Yeah. I just put my headset on. Oh yeah, he's talking about talking about uh, how Rai's been contributing 3P packages and how it would be cool if like any given third party viewer um, if they have some library that they're using that they could submit a PR or request that we import their 3P yeah. repo and just host it even if our viewer doesn't use it yet just to make it easier to get contributions going back and forth. Uh, I think... I, I, didn't. I, didn't. I mean, the, the way to do that is... Um, well, people have been... You know, if, if you talk to... Linden and alternatively submit a ticket to the viewer repository that says, like, hey, I've got this 3 pre library, we're going to use it... Um, it needs the right license in it so that the ownership is clear. But if that license is in place and makes sense, then you know we can fork it. And then I'll, it's pretty easy to toss in a GitHub build for it. So yeah, I mostly just I maintain our packages separately just because I like to know what Visual Studio version all my stuff was built with because I have been bitten in the ass too many times by Visual Studio breaking. Yeah, yeah. I it's really that. hard to debug that if you're not maintaining the entire thing yourself. Yeah, there's with, with auto build, it's very opaque in terms of the compilation flags. Something like Conan, it's a lot easier to understand no, like the entire was, supply I was, chain. I was looking at Conan, and I've hated Conan for years, but now I'm like, Conan might be a good idea. My sanity likes that idea. I mean, I this... to go to happy hour, but now Pepper just got back, so I'm going to go see if we can't unstick gltf uploads Ooh, that's fun yeah okay all right that's good luck y'all have fun talking about third-party libraries i'm sure I'm, be... I'm, I'm gonna go right. gently massage beta fractal <laughs> okay see you on discord see ya Anyway, bye.